Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from MechTech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a keyboard from Keyboom. I hope I'm saying that right. This is the first keyboard that I've taken a look at from them. It is the Keyboom 68%. It appears to have a uh, icky type of layout with the uh, four button or the four key cluster up at the top and the arrow keys below it with the badge right there. I reached out to Keyboom because I had, I started to see their keyboards pop up here and there and I was like, hey, can I take a look at one of your guys' keyboards? They seem really interesting and um, they look well built but I'd really love to take a look at one. So they went ahead and sent me out this one in exchange for my honest review. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we've got. Well, first things first, let's go ahead and see what we have in the box. Oh, wow. This is the biggest microfiber cloth I've ever seen. Um, How do I look? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, this has, uh, wow, I could think of a lot of uses for this. I am uh, honestly uh, kind of impressed. It's like a, a blanket. All right, all right, nice keyboard. Let's go to sleep. Good night. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, and it actually has their, uh, their name in Boston here. That's actually pretty nice. I gotta say, this is a, a surprise. That's the last thing I was expecting to see was a microfiber cloth, especially one the size of a baby blanket. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put that aside for now. Oh, wow. We have a user manual. Very thick and actually nice uh, stock user manual. It does appear to come in a couple of different languages, including Japanese, but obviously English is what matters to us. So it has the, uh, the different um, keyboard shortcuts. It is a three mode, then it allows for three Bluetooth devices, a one 2.4 gigahertz, um, and as well as USB-C. All right, and they also do include a warranty. Any factory defects that might affect the proper functionality of your purchase does not cover any damage that may occur from normal wear and tear. If your product is defective, we will send you a replacement unit. Replacement units might require you to send the defective unit back. One year warranty. Now that is nice. I'm starting to see this a little more often and it's a nice thing to see companies standing behind their products. Now we also have a nice nylon braided USB-C to USB-A cable with nice covers on it. These, this is a sturdy cable. It's a little bit thicker than your average bear and feels quite nice. Yes. All right. What else do we have in here? If I can get in here. Oh. All right. Oh, wow. All right. So I guess they... They don't mind you getting in there because they include a screwdriver. That's always a nice thing to see. I, I like when they include tools that they're just the right size because it's going to help prevent, you know, say if somebody's going to open it up, they just take their own driver and they use a, a bit that's too small perhaps and it starts like actually stripping it. Ones that are included, you know, they're going to be the right size and they're going to fit and work. And if you're careful enough, you're not going to be stripping the screw. Now we do have a separate switch. Oh, oh, this is actually a nice one. This one's made out of a much thicker, let me see, is it aluminum? I don't know. It's a steel switch puller. This is actually quite nice. I gotta say, I like it. I don't usually like the smaller ones because they're usually these little dingy horseshoe ones that like have very little strength to them but this one this is solid yeah I like how it's branded as well that's very that's a nice switch puller I might actually start using that on the regular now we do have a keycap puller 
um, with the hole for your finger in the middle so you can get a little leverage in there. We have a couple of extra switches and careful not to dump it out because we actually have a couple of little screws in there which I'm sure we'll find out what they're for. But let me go ahead and put this in here so that we don't lose it. I'll set that aside for right now. I'm going to keep the switch puller handy. All right, so we have a couple of extra switches, which I always appreciate. One never knows what could go wrong with a switch, you know, flipping it out, breaking a pin, bending it. Who knows? Having a couple of extra switches is always great. I mean, when we buy switches, we buy them in packs of 70, 90, 110. So we have extra ones for just in case. My extras usually go towards making Franken switches. So. <laughs> But it is a nice pink linear. It's uh, not the lightest. I would guess 40, 45 grams maybe of force. Has no ping and no scratch. So I'm going to assume that it is pre-lubed. And it does have the key, key boom. Please correct me if I'm saying it wrong. K-I-I. -I, Kai boom or key boom? Key, I think, would work because keyboard, key boom. Huh? Maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. But it's a nice poppy linear. It does appear to be a long pull. I would guess maybe 3.8 millimeter travel. All right, that's nice. And here's the star of today's show the Key Boom Phantom 68. I like the name Phantom because it's, you know, translucent. So it it's almost not here. <laughs> no, I, I, um, I believe I picked this color. I've been wanting to go more in some pastel color waves and everything and kind of just switch it up from the black, gray, white, blue colors and get a little bit more pink, purple, you know, some more pop into keyboards. And I really like this. So it looks like we have, oh, well, that's nice. It's a nice magnetic badge. I was not expecting that. That's actually a nice little hunk of aluminum with a magnet embedded into it. And bam, there it goes. I, I like that. Now, taking a look at the bottom, I thought I felt it's got an aluminum weight down at the bottom. Um, you can see right through it. It does have a spot for the USB dongle, and it is magnetic, but... Manufacturers have all started to put their logo on their dongle and because I have a box of dozens, at least two or three dozen uh, USB dongles, 2.4 dongles that are either white or black and nothing else on them. What does it go to? If, if that so happens to fall one day when I'm going from one room to the other and then I come across it and didn't realize that it fell, I'm going to be like, which keyboard does this go to? It's just going to go into that box, and maybe someday it'll get paired back up. So it's so one of the things I really appreciate is when they, I mean, put the model, put the your brand name, put something that will help me to whittle it down to which keyboard it actually goes to. But I do like the, oh, <laughs> it doesn't just drop into place, but it almost does. The magnet is pretty strong. So that's good. There's a good chance that you actually won't lose it. Yeah, that's in there good. I just gave it a couple of good smacks. I like the fact that it's touched with aluminum with the weight at the bottom, uh, the back plate, and then with this uh, badge that's removable with holes for the lights. It's got a really nice looking build, but I'm trying to... I don't know if that's a, an illusion of the light. Because here it looks like this is completely at the bottom. But if we look at it from the side, looks like there's a big gap right there. And I can't quite tell. So I'm going to have to um, come back to this when I come back to mod it and look at what's on the inside. We'll have to see what's in there when we open it up now we do have a um it looks like i want to say oem though they might be an mda 
or taller keycap. It sounds a little poppier than I expected it to. Stabilizers could use a little tuning, but let's see what we have in here. All right, so these are some pretty tight, I'm going to guess, polycarbonate keys. Ugh, that took a lot of force to get that from there. So we've got some tight tolerances on the keycaps. Um, I've been becoming a little bit more a fan of translucent keyboards, but the way the keycaps are done, there's obviously no standard. Everybody's going to design differently. But these, this, um, I mean, just look at it. On the white background, you can kind of see it, but if I'm just tilting it like that, it looks like it's a blank key. Um, honestly, on these, I'd prefer a reverse to where you wouldn't actually have backspace written out, but you'd have the negative parts filled in so that the backspace would shine through and it would be more visible with both light and no light. But let's take a look at the stabilizers here. Oh, those are actually quite well attached. Tolerances are pretty tight. Let's go ahead and pull them out and see what they look like. I like the fact that they're actually pink as well. So we're going throughout with a theme. They are lightly lubed. No crazy amount of lube, just enough. And they feel like they could be palm. They feel like that softer plastic. And looking in here, look at here. We have PCB-mounted stabilizers ability. So we're compatible and we can add PCB-mounted stabilizers. And it even looks like the plate has the space to allow for them. There does appear to be some room. So when I come back to it, that may be one of the first things that I do is put in some screw-in stabilizers. And I actually do have a set of pink screw-in stabilizers. So that's probably what I'm going to choose. It is also south facing and it does appear to have a IXPE layer as well as a PET layer with what feels like a silicone rubber or poron layer uh, below the case in the PCB. Let's go ahead and put this back in. Um, I'm actually a, a, a fan of this layout because it has the uh, the arrow cluster exploded out and here we kind of just have I mean don't get me wrong home and end I use but I'm gonna assume that page up and page down probably bound to that underneath with the function layer but I call it anytime I see this layout I just think of an icky Aurora um, because I think they're the first seaboard to implement this layout I actually have a couple that have this layout, but some of them that actually have the full right shift with the arrow cluster kind of moved over a little bit. But we do have the uh, one and a quarter U keys on both sides of the space bar and a standard six and a quarter space bar. The, um, there's a slight, I don't know if it's a ring. It's not a tick. It's just a, it's a little off. It doesn't, it's not like, whoa. It's just, um, it could be a lot clackier though, I gotta say, but. Sounds pretty good. Not bad, not bad at all. Let's see what the thickness of these keycaps are. Okay, that's, don't get me wrong. I, I like keycaps that fit, but when you have these tolerances like this, I mean, that's uh, takes some force to pop that out. It should not take that much force, in my opinion. Uh, now, granted, they're new, but I should be able to pull the keycap off without the switch coming along with it. But that probably means that we have 
nice room with the tolerances on the plate. Now, it does look like we have a polycarbonate plate, and I'm going to assume that this is a polycarbonate body as well. We have the switches here for either 2.4 or Bluetooth, and switches on the back give us Windows and Mac mode, and then USB, Bluetooth, and 2.4. I like that there's actually texture on the buttons. It makes it a lot easier to slide them back and forth than when they're just smoothed out. Taking a look at this keycap, see what the width of the body is. All right, 1.4, that's not bad, not bad at all. Anything above 1.0 is good. Closer to 1.5, even better. So 1.4 is nice. Um, they are polycarbonate keys and they're pretty darn strong. I don't know, I kind of figured the first color that would be set would be a pink, but I guess now I'm gonna have to, oh, there's the colors. Oh, that's, I guess it's close. Oh, now there we go. Well, that might be white that's coming through as pink because of the tint of the keyboard. Looks like we've got about 12 colors, maybe. Plus the rainbow. That does look pretty good. I like that. At least the caps lock indicator changes, changes colors. So even if we're in different color modes. You know your caps is on and you don't need a window because you can see right through it. So this is probably going to be whoever's going to use it side for those of us to type, you know, touch type because it's um it's difficult to see the legends with no lights on, but it's pretty hard to see them with the lights on. I'm I mean, I can kind of see the backspace, and I mean, I can kind of make them out, but with the lights off, they're hard to see because there's actually some glare, and I've got the lights turned down in here for the lights to show up, but because of the glare, it just becomes a dome kind of a shininess. Now, I'm guessing the camera it's coming through a lot better, but from my angle kind of looks uh, I actually can see it there but closer to this that's kind of what I see from my angle it's just the lights reflected off of every keycap yeah like the left hand side there that's kind of what it looks like from my angle so <clears throat> and don't get me wrong I, I know that transparent keycaps have really become popular uh, in the last while and I've seen different combinations of uh, how they're done. The best that I've seen done so far, in my opinion, um, are probably the soda keycaps. The soda keycaps, they're clear, they're almost like a pudding, but they're clear all the way around. Then the top, basically they have a, I want to say PBT double shot, but the legend is actually negative. So that's where the light shines through. And um, I've got about three or four colors of them. And whether the lights are on, off, it's dark, it's light, I can see the legends. So, but like I said, I've seen different um, implementations. Now, granted, if there was more light in here, I know that I'd be able to see the keys. It, it, it's a pretty tall keycap set. And I mean, it, I don't, I want to say it's not OEM, it might be MDA? So this is an acrylic case, all right. I, I, I assumed it was PC. This is acrylic. Wow, well, PC has gotten better. I recently reviewed one that was PC and I thought it was acrylic. So I kind of assumed that this one was acrylic. So no, this is, I mean, I assumed that this one was PC when it's actually acrylic, which just makes those, um, I love these aluminium accents. I just, the front, the back, the bottom, it, it, those those are some real nice touches. They just say customized crystal keycaps. 
but it doesn't say the profile. Nothing about the profile, so I would guess because they look almost uniform, but they do have a bit of a sculpt to them. They could be just one of the um, uh, so many different profiles, and there's new ones. I mean, there's MTNU. I still haven't had a chance to try any MTNUs yet, um, but I mean, aesthetically, this keyboard is pleasing. Like I said, the keycap uh, situation. I don't. I mean. The, the legend situation I wouldn't really categorize as a as a negative I'd say I mean if you want a clear looking keyboard this one's definitely it um, and like I said if you're a touch typer then it really isn't going to be that much of a of a difference but if you work in an office you have friends you know that might use your keyboard every once in a while who knows i mean everybody's obviously different they might be like whoa now i know that i mean <laughs> pink is my daughter's favorite color and i know when i show her this keyboard she will probably want to take it away from me but so may may wait a little while because i do want to i may wait a little while before i show her the keyboard so at least i get a chance to test drive it first as far as magnetic badges this one i think is done really well uh, one of the better ones that i've seen uh, so far the lights are definitely bright um, this is not something you're going to to miss i mean obviously we could that's at the lowest brightness that's the highest brightness. So yeah, these are pretty. Oh, that one actually left a switch in there. Those lights are really nice and bright. It's funny, it looks for a second, I was like, wait a minute, are those Otemu sockets? Is this a three pin keyboard? <laughs> no, it's just the IXP sheet. It's only got the little slivers cut out for the pins and they kind of come together when you pull the switch out so I like the tolerances on that honestly I think that space bar just needs a little bit of lube and it'd be fine. I want to stick to stock right now, so I'm not gonna not gonna touch it uh, before the sound test. But when I come back to it, um, probably take the uh, stabilizers apart and uh, clean them up and then relude them. I think they'll probably do the trick because they're well attached to the plate. They're not going anywhere. Just the specs. Today we're taking a look at the Keyboom Phantom 68. A three mode, 65% acrylic clear case mechanical keyboard. This one is in the pink color. It is a gasket mounted PC plate that includes hot swappable three and five pins south facing PCB, IXPE and PET layers above the PCB. This keyboard is available in four clear colors, including pink, clear, purple, and black. This keyboard not only supports per-key RGB, but also includes software for both PC and Macintosh. It is preloaded with a 4000 milliamp hour battery, has a weight of 1180 grams, the chin sits at 24 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 37 millimeters above the typing surface, providing for a typing angle of 9 degrees. This keyboard's manufactured suggested retail price is $149. So one of the nice things about this keyboard is it includes Mac software. Now, I'm a Linux user, so I'm kind of just... I know I'm never going to get any software, so... 
I have to have a Windows machine in order to program my keyboards, unless it's a VIA QMK or VIAL, one of the open source firmwares. But um, I do understand that Linux still makes up only around or roughly around 10% of the desktop usage, whereas Macintosh and Windows definitely take up the other majority of the 90% left over. So I can appreciate when a keyboard manufacturer supports more than one um, operating system, though I do wish, do hope that they start moving towards, okay, keep, you know, your closed firm software, but also use QMK. You know, get an MCU that's compatible. Actually, some of these keyboards do have MCUs that would be compatible, but for some reason they choose to use closed source software, which, I mean, okay, uh, some of it's good. I've, I've come across some good closed source software, but the majority of it is, it's lacking. Um, I will be taking a quick look at the software here to see what it offers, but from what I understand, it gives you layer programming, per key RGB, macros, all of the, um, you know, the general stuff. And I do believe that you can actually program the function layer as well. Uh, I've got to say this keyboard, it, it's probably in big part due to the pink aluminum accents, but it has a premium feel, feel to it. Now it is an acrylic board and I do, I do have a place in my heart for acrylic. It's, it just feels good and it sounds good for the most part. This one actually has a bit of a kind of a clacky um, tone, though I know that with a little bit of work, a couple of mods, I think I could get this to be quite thocky. Um, the linear switch is, it's decent enough. Um, I mean, the big thing about it is that it's clear uh, and people like that. Obviously, there are other clear switches out there. One of the ones that I like is the North Pole by Gatoron, but uh, there's not too many switches from Gatoron that I don't like. <laughs> um, this is a, uh, it's an interesting keyboard. Um, it's definitely big on aesthetics. You can tell that a lot of time and effort went into designing this keyboard. And I do love how the light refraction kind of gives you a little bit of a distortion of how what's really going on in there. I mean, we can see the battery, but it looks like the... Oh, look at me just hitting stuff. Oh. I accidentally locked the Windows key. But it has a... Um, has a very interesting design. I'm actually very curious to get in there and the fact that they actually include the screwdriver means that they're okay with it. Um, I mean obviously don't go in there and start breaking stuff and I wanted to claim a warranty but um, I am very interested especially the fact that it has the possibility for screw and stabilizers. I would almost bet money on this keyboard being loaded with an MCU that would be QMK compatible. But it is it is nice looking. I gotta say I I would not be upset if I had one of every color. <laughs> I, I, I yes, I, I have a problem with keyboards. I have a few. But um you can tell that there was some design put into this. I, I'm i a code guy. I can do code all day long, but I mean, and I can do a front end that's functional. It just isn't going to look like it was put together by a designer. It's going to look like it's put together by a programmer. But I can appreciate when the interface, the user experience is well done. Um, this to me is is like a well well built interface. Um, the only thing, and of course, you know, like I said, this is more me than anybody else, but is the legends. It's the ability to see the legends. Um, obviously, that can be fixed. Uh, when I come back to it, I'm probably going to 
I'll load up like a, a Shaco, no, not Shaco, a Sakura, a Sakura set on here, probably Ghost Road to Sakura, and get that real, you know, pink, because the light's still gonna come through, and, you know, the legends can be seen. I do wonder if there are other options for badges, but I, I, I gotta tell you, I like that. I just wish I really knew what that light was. I mean, if I... Oh, okay, so it's like the pairing light, but when you're in USB, what does it mean? That I don't know, and the manual doesn't state. But I um obviously it's not a uh, it's not an issue. So today we took a look at the Key Boom Phantom 68. I love Phantom as a name because it actually kind of describes what it is as it's you know it's half there. You know, it's kind of like a phantom. Um, it's a wisp. You know, because the color is so light, you can basically see through the whole thing the transparency of the phantom you know i don't know I, I i think it's it's a fitting name sometimes keyboard names just like what what but this one i think it's uh it's quite befitting now i did see also on their website they actually have a matching because they have these in um 65 75 uh percent with a knob and they also have a macro pad that's available that matches to this color. Now that I have the pink, it's like, oh, well, can I, can I get the macro pad too? <laughs> because I think, uh, I mean, nothing like having matching accessories, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not like, you know, people are coming to buy and checking, you know, taking a look at my desktop all the time. But I guess it's just me. You know, if I have a particular macro pad that I use that sometimes works with the keyboards, looks nice, but sometimes it just kind of looks out of place. But I still get to put my mouse in the middle, and that's what counts. Anyway, I do hope that you guys enjoyed the review. I will be coming back to this here in the near future to go ahead and, and see what we can do to it and change the tones. Um, I probably will switch out the switches and the key caps as well and maybe do a Tempest tape on. But I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys right now with a stock sound test. Uh, again, if you have any questions or any comments, go ahead and leave them down in the comments below. I do my best to answer all comments. And let's get a conversation going. So I do hope that you enjoy the sound test. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on. <laughs>